So we're here at the Sharp booth and this is Memory LCD. So hello, so who are you? I'm Jeremy Locke. Um, I've been working on Memory LCD for quite a number of years within Sharp. Um, so this is uh, some of our technology. The idea very much is that it's a reflective display and so it's for very good outdoor readability. Um, extremely low power. So we're talking about microwatts. Very few displays that are out there at the moment have the capability of performing at microwatt type of values. So this is our memory and pixel. We have other examples here. If you want to see, here's a, a demo, a simple demo of a moving uh, picture so you can get an idea of the capability of the technology. Um, each pixel stores uh, data and so we're able to hold that data in a still image and just have that extremely low power functionality. I don't know whether you can see yeah. that. So, uh, so are you basically as uh, responsive as any LCD or? Yeah, this is typically um, in the same way. It's just the same materials that we use um, with memory LCD um, as you would with a standard LCD but it's just a one bit, so it's a very simple display, very easy to integrate. And here you can see this is for energy harvesting, so we've got a very small um, solar cell, um, which also we've been doing some research on. So this solar cell is um, quite a powerful device um, and is for indoor energy harvesting. So right so here... Everything is, everything is being driven just by that solar cell. So right here, this could be a smartwatch and this could be on the wristband or somewhere and yeah, then that's it's forever? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then everything can be driven purely by um, that solar cell, maybe a super cap or something like that, or some form of storage might be useful um, for nighttime um, use as well. So it would run the, the display and could be an ARM processor and some Bluetooth yeah. and some well, other stuff? Well, at the moment, this is already running. If you, if you look on the back, this is already running quite a, quite a little bit of um, electronics anyway. We've got a an MPU on the back there, there's also Wi-Fi capability and other aspects within this device. Um, and so we're able to run that type of thing with um, our uh, solar cell. So you're already in this uh, very, very popular uh, brand right here. This is all of the, in all the pebbles. Yep, that's right. So this is one of the, the products. Um, we're producing this product typically for the sports type um, application. And you can see this Pebble Watch here. And then we've, we've got um, several other industrial applications that we're using the device in. And a lot of interest at the moment, really, in terms of uh, the device. All right. And uh, so you're showing some other displays right here? Yeah, so we've got quite a range here. We're going from about 0.96 inch through to, this is a 2.7 inch. That you can see there, that's 400 by 240. So it's quite high resolution. What kind of, uh, could this be shelf labels or what kind of... Uh... Yeah, it could be shelf labels, um, it could be um, information display, it could be in, in sort of the home sort of situation where it's just information displays that we're using um, within home energy management systems and that type of thing. All right. Uh, and this color? Yeah, that's right. So this is um, a simple color device. So again, we're trying to keep the power and the simplicity there. So this is just basically an eight color device, but you can see that even um, without a backlight, so this is, we're still talking about maybe 25 to 30 uh, microwatts of power that this is requiring. So it's very, very low. But you can see the clarity of the image, um, even in the, the light performance um, in this room. So um, memory LCD could be perfect for smartwatch, right? For smartwatch? And for other applications, actually, there's no reason why with um, it's just smartwatch. So we're talking about sports applications. Um, there can be um, cycle information displays, uh, automotive. There, there's lots of areas, really, that this can be used. And, and one of the key things, as the number of displays increases within the industry, then this is extremely low power. So you're not using um, much battery life. And typically, we're looking at trying to have a product that maybe will last for one year um, on a typical button cell type battery. So I, I was at the China Sourcing Fair, I, see, I saw some awesome memory LCD smartwatch with 20 day battery life. So this is a whole different class than Apple Watch and some other stuff. That, that's it? right, there's no comparison. It, it, it's not 
um, competing in that type of market. This is where somebody wants um, significant um, lifetime in terms of their battery performance. You know, typically, if you, if you have no access to power, then it's, it's no good to have a smartwatch, you know. If, for instance, you go away for a week or a weekend, then you're in a position where um, you can have a device like this and you've not got to worry. It can be there, it can be as an emergency backup or, or anything in terms of the information that it gives you. So it could be for IoT and uh, displays everywhere? That's right, everywhere. Um, in terms of, at the moment, this is a, a fixed glass substrate. Um, but ultimately there's no reason why you can't start to, to move into to more um, wearable or flexible uh, types of product. And it supports a backlight? It does it's, support a backlight. It's typically, not a front light? Typically we try and avoid that, but um, on this um, you can have a backlight, it's got some transmissive components. Um, but it could also have a front light as well. The backlight is, would just be optional, right? Uh, maybe... It's just optional. And also you can use it for information again. So you could use different color backlights so that you're able to maybe indicate a warning or to say everything is okay by green or red LEDs that you use. And so by doing that, then you can keep the power right down as well. So it's just a display and uh, could it maybe run a uh, software like Android Wear? Well, there's no reason. This is it's very, very simple interface. So this is just one serial pin of data. So this is just a, a Raspberry Pi, just knocked up really you... um, fairly, fairly quickly. So you can see here, we're just using a standard Raspberry Pi here and using the GPIO pins. Um, so basically it can be connected to, to anything fairly, fairly simply. So if anybody wants to make an Android Wear with like 10, 15, 20 days battery life, they should use a memory LCD. Absolutely, and, and you'll find on the internet already, um, there's, there's lots of um, guys who have been looking at memory LCD uh, and they love it because it's so easy to interface with some of these little systems. It gives them the information they want. If they're doing some sensoring, then you want information from your sensor. You want to be able to know what actually you're measuring and what's going on. And so the, the information display that we have, the memory and pixel can give you that. So when you do uh, solar cells, you do a PV, uh, are you optimizing for wearable or what kind of uh, what, uh, are the, are those extremely special uh, solar cells? Well, the, the... The, these are a new type of solar cells. So this is giving us a factor of improvement of something around about six compared to your typical PV. And so six the, times better. Six times better. And the purpose really here is for indoor use. So it's energy harvesting indoors. So you even in low light conditions. You can see even in the low light conditions it's able to drive this memory and pixel display along with the electronics um, associated with it. So it's quite significant really in terms of the power output of such a device. So you say uh, that it's been uh, designed for uh, over the last bunch of years. How, when did it start? Well memory and pixel probably started in something like um, 2008 I think it was. Um, this type of technology um, is just an extension of your standard LCD. So Sharp have been doing sort of transflective displays for many, many years. And so this is just pushing the, the transflective to a simple reflective display and then having that memory store in each pixel. So it's not transflective? It's, it's not transflective in the sense that we normally talk about transflective. It's a reflective display that has a small transmissive part so you can have a backlight but it's predominantly reflective so that you keep the power right down you're not actually introducing um, any significant hit from a backlight what, what, are you, what is the power that always runs what does it what is it used for when it was a little bit power right to keep there, it, there's uh, a tiny on. little bit of power um, typ typically liquid crystal um, requires something just to keep keep it operational um, and so you, you're actually running this so that the, the pixel gives you a clear image. You could actually drop that down, but then you start to lose um, the image quality. So and it's much better to keep it running. And how low power are you talking about? Let's say it's normal smartwatch uh, battery runs how long with this uh, standby well, mode? Well, I think typically you're, you're talking about in excess of a year. And a of, year is possible on the, uh, on the and watch? And of course, you've got to remember, it depends on what other electronics is using that battery. So from a display point of view, when you're talking about maybe 15 to 20 microwatts, it's extremely 
low power and you don't have to consider that and if you're only updating once a second the power will go up maybe to 35 40 microwatts so it, it starts to increase when you refresh but it's still extremely low power so it's uh, two or three times a little bit more power just to change the pixels yeah because you've got to drive the system to actually give you a new image one significant advantage as well is that you don't ask when you refresh the whole display you don't have to refresh refresh the whole display you can refresh parts of the display so if you just refresh a part it's only that then part the that power comes down only there that it yep. uses power yep. so uh, you, you were saying uh, yesterday at the keynote that uh, so every every pixel has a memory how does that's, it work that's right so it's, it's just a simple SRAM uh, block within each pixel so there's a few transistors so we're using um, a low temperature polysilicon type technology here and we call it CGS which is our continuous grain silicon. So the performance there enables us um, to have transistors that actually are very good switches and we can build logic gates and other systems. So within this memory LCD you'll find that all the driver circuits are actually on the glass. So there's nothing actually that's required outside of the glass. And so in each pixel, we have several transistors that are actually storing the data. And so then you, don't, you only need to refresh or change that when you want to update your image. So each pixel has their own kind of electronics yes. driving them. That's and right. That's and right. it's different from how LCDs and uh, well, normal LCDs are. A normal LCD just has one transistor which acts as a switch. And so you, you drive that and that switching then uh, and driving the LC material. Here you're actually storing that data and then you're able to drive um, the LC material. And how's the price? Is it uh, going to be pot potentially in hundreds of millions of devices because it's very affordable? Well, one thing is um, there's a lot of technology in this. So um, a low temperature polysilicon is a little bit more expensive than your typical amorphous silicon. So there is a price um, hit. But as you see with a standard um, watch like this, then obviously um, we have, we're having customers that the price is not a not such an issue. All right. So you get an idea. Is that, it um, like a a for display that size is just a few dollars more or something? Yeah, compared to an LCD just, that would have yeah, only yeah, one yeah, day yeah. battery you're life. You're just talking about a few dollars. Um, because it, all this is already mass production. Everything is ready for mass production. Everything is. Uh, it's just uh, any hardware maker can just order as many as they want right now for all the displays that you have? Yeah, so, so typically the displays on show here are ones that are already in mass production. And so they are available either from our distribution channels or depending on the type of quantities, um, direct from shop. So when I go to a China Sourcing Fair, I see, I see several memory LCD devices. So is it easy for them to just implement, take the LCD and put it on their PCBs and it just works? Yeah, pretty much. Um, it's very simple structure because it's standard structure. It's very simple in terms of its interface because of the data um, requirement to drive it. Um, and it's just, all in all, it's very simple for any, anybody to get a hold of and to actually get it working. C could you describe a little bit uh, how the viewing angles and the, maybe the, uh, the contrast, how, um, how, how, does it, how does it work in memory LCD? Well, at the moment, um, this is, again, it's just typical um, LCD type structure. So, depending, you, you can have, potentially, um, different technologies that are driving um, the actual device. Something like so, IPS and TN? Is it something so like that? Or? Typically, this is TN at the moment, um, but there is no reason why you couldn't have other types of right. LCD. TN is, is satisfactory for what we actually need, so there's not an issue there, really. Um, but at, at some point in the future, I'm sure this will go to a, maybe, maybe a wider view type um, VA application as well. And Sharp is doing a IGZO and stuff like that. Is that compatible with this or is that something else? Well, IGZO is the backplane, so at the moment we're using CGS. Um, IGZO is, is relatively new and our focus for IGZO is in other areas at the moment, particularly in the sort of tablet type um, industry. Whereas with this, potentially IGZO is. Um, a backplane that we, we could use in the future, yes. How about uh, more colors or uh, more saturation in colors or something? Uh, is that a possibility or how, how's the consideration for this demo right now? Yeah, well at the moment what we're doing, we're just trying to keep um, 
They're very, very simple. So this is an eight color device. So um, eight colors? Some, yeah, it's eight colors. Uh, why is this eight colors? What's the... So basically you've got your RGB, um, and so from that simple structure you can get your red, green, blue, and also your cyan, yellow, and magenta, and then black and white. So there's your eight. And so it's because it, we're just working with a single bit switch at the moment. Um, it will add complexity into the pixel structure once you go for more colors. All right. Is there a difference in the visibility on the when it's color and when it's just black and white? Or? Well, typically color is the, for instance, the white is being built up from the RGB color filter. So you're going to get a performance difference in terms of what white looks like um, with the um, color version. But one thing the color version gives you is actually better contrast. So in one, there's, there maybe is a trade-off in different areas um, for the, in terms of performance of the